Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm excited to introduce Hinkle's shared privacy layer, enabling next wave of institutional and enterprise adoption of blockchains across all chains with shared privacy. With Hinkle V1, we have already proven the need for privacy across two verticals. First, private on-chain trading strategies, including liquidity provision, staking, and yield trading. And second, enterprise B2B payments settled in stable coins. We have processed over hundreds of millions in transactions in 2024. And here how Hinkle works. First, users passes compliance check and means access token. Access token is a green light to do private transactions. Then every user has private address inside Hinkle smart contract. And at the moment of transaction, user generates zero knowledge proof and stealth address, proving that he has enough funds and that he maintains compliance check uh, in the wallet. And then Relayer passes message on external dApps, such as Uniswap, Pendle, and others, and puts back swaps uh, uh, swapped assets back to the shielded address. This way, user maintains full privacy both on the asset side and on the transaction side. But here's the question, how can we scale this approach ac across all blockchains while users maintain full anonymity and also enable ecosystem participation from other members? While building Hinkle, we faced two major problems. First is scalability. With proliferation of L1s and L2s, there is a need of privacy pool on each of them. And we know it's very hard to build this privacy pool because it requires high capital costs and also time costs. And second, uh, there is a problem of incentives for depositors of this pool. Let's imagine I deposited 100 ETH in the pool and the second person deposited one ETH in the pool. I provided anonymity for the second buy guy, but second guy didn't provide anything. So it's a classic public good provision problem that liquidity providers are facing. And this is a second problem that hinders boosting liquidity pools, privacy pools on each of the chain. We are presenting Hinkle version two, shared privacy where users can share privacy with other users on the same chain and other networks. How does it work? First, we are introducing mirror shielded pools on other L1s and L2s. What does it mean? Um, it means that there is a main privacy pool boosted on Ethereum mainnet with a high liquidity. And if a user wants to enjoy privacy on other chain, he should privately transfer funds from the main shielded pool to other shielded pools on L2s and other L1s. What does it give him? It gives him the same probability distribution, the same anonymity set. So mirror shielded pools are inherited probability set of the main shielded pool on Ethereum mainnet. And what is the problem does it solve? And the main problem is uh, bootstrapping privacy pools on each of this chain. Now you no longer need to bootstrap it from zero. You just need to transfer privately from the main shielded pool to other L1s and L2s. Second, uh, we're introducing new players, stakers, in addition to depositors. Stakers are players that do not necessarily need privacy, but they're renting out privacy to other players. And in return, they are getting receipt tokens, which are yield bearing. And this yield comes from the transactions of the users, the fees they are paying with transacting like private swaps, private liquidity provision. So uh, stakers, in addition to providing liquidity, they are renting out anonymity to all other players on the same network and also other networks. How generally cross-chain private transfers work? There are two conditions here necessary to satisfy. First, all transactions are submitted by the third party relayer. And user now generates not only one ZK proof that he holds assets, 
but two ZK proofs. It's a source chain and destination chain. And the second important characteristics of private transfers is, of course, atomicity of the transaction. So if it fails on a destination chain, it should also fail on a source chain. But atomicity with private transaction is a little bit different than may not normal atomicity because it also requires the balance of commitments. Commitments are the value nodes which are inserted in the smart contract. So it means that commitment balance should be satisfied. If commitments are created or destroyed, there should be accompanied uh, transfer of the value, transfers of ERC-20 tokens. And uh, the main point uh, is that stakers should provide anonymity to the pool. How is it possible? Because they're getting receipt tokens. And uh, the main thing here is that they should be indistinguishable from depositors, from the outsider perspective. And there is a way to achieve this. First, are not meted straight away. They're meted after some luck. This is done for aggregation. <coughs> also, there should be three conditions satisfied in order to be private and permissionless. First of all, stakers like depositors are inserting commitments. These are nodes denoting their value in smart contract. And for stakers, they should plug commitments as well as depositors, but these commitments shouldn't correspond to real UTXOs, so unspent uh, transaction outputs. This is done for pooling, so for depositors and uh, stakers to be indistinguishable. And second is withdrawal addresses should be provided by stakers for them to be compensated with receipt, receipt token, of course encrypted. And third, there should be uh, Merkle inclusion constraints slack for the uh, stakers because they sh it should be permissionless for them to uh, provide liquidity. And uh, this is enforceable in ZK circuits. I'm passing back to Georgia. With anonymity staking, we are introducing new asset class, which is shared privacy tokens. Shared privacy tokens are packed to underlying collateral, there are no slashing conditions, and they generate yield. One shared privacy token, such as H-staked ETH, can represent two sources of yield, first from staking on Ethereum, and second from uh, uh, staking on shared privacy. They can also represent three sources of yield, including restaking, we incentivize five most liquid tokens for restaking. And they can generate from, five to, from two to 5% additional APY from private transactions. We charge 10 BIPs from transaction and part of this goes to anonymity stakers. Plus, receipt tokens are fully composable. So youth stakers can bring these tokens anywhere in DeFi and trade them with very limited risk. The only risk for anonymity staking is smart contract risk of the protocol. With protocol structure, we're trying to incentivize all ecosystem members introducing roles. Our goal is to bring adoption to all developers to, to integrate Hinkle smart contract early on when they build trading applications or payment applications. So first we introduce, introduced curators and curators are trading firms facilitating the app integrations. They have part of the upside from the fees. Second are staking delegates. And in the, in the downtrend of restaking market, we are offering new source of yield to operators so their stakers can restake on Hinkle and generate additional yield so they can maintain TVL. And the last one is DAPS. We are enabling privacy by modular SDK but also additional source of fees and revenues for the DAPs. So we share the fees with them. The ultimate vision of Hinko is one private address across all chains and DAPs. And with upcoming chain abstraction layers, Hinko sits in one of the layers and users don't actually understand which chain uh, they interact with. It's totally abstracted with one private Hinko address. Thank you.